All right, um, so today uh, we're going to be looking at what are called compound, um, they're called compound events. These are events where more than one thing is happening. Up until now, you've looked at the probability of a single event taking place. What's the probability of rolling a six? What's the probability of flipping coins and getting a heads? What's the probability of drawing a red marble out? Now we're going to look at uh, situations where you have more than one thing happening and you're looking at the probability of both or more of those options taking place. Um, I've started uh, teaching by showing uh, some examples from the homework and then uh, that leaves the examples, well you guys don't have a textbook to look at, but I think it'll be useful for you to see uh, an example from the homework as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you that. Um, just so you have a sense of, uh, of how these things work. First thing we're going to talk about is using what's called a tree diagram. And I think you'll see why it's called a tree diagram to, call, to, to create what's called the sample space. And the sample space will show us how many outcomes we're going to have. This is going to make a lot more sense when I show it to you. So let's say that we have a birthday party. And let's say at this birthday party there are three activities you could do. You could do uh, miniature golf. You could do um, uh, laser tag, and you could do um, roller skating, okay? Now, you have two times you can choose to do any of these activities. You can either do them at uh, 1 o'clock or 6 o'clock. So, here's some possible things you could do at this party, okay? You could play miniature golf at one o'clock, or you could play miniature golf at six o'clock, right? Um, you could also do laser tag at either one o'clock or six o'clock, right? And with roller skating, you could also do roller skating at either one o'clock or six o'clock, right? So these are all the possible things you could do. You could do miniature golf at 1, miniature golf at 6, laser tag at 1, laser tag at 6, roller skating at 1, roller skating at 6. Those are all the possibilities. The end of this tree diagram here is what we call the sample space. That's the sample space. And what that does is tell you what are the possibilities. What are the choices that you have? How many choices do you have? You have six choices, and that is the uh, that is the total number of possible outcomes okay would be six choices okay so six choices and you'll always find that in the um at the end of the the tree okay this uh, basically just counting here one two three four five six six choices okay that's number two on your homework i'm going to expect you to do that one i've done it for you already and you'll be able to do the same thing as you look at some other assignments um, in your homework as well, okay? Um, now, there is actually a smaller, uh, a shorter way to do this than doing um, a tree like this, okay? And the way to do that is um, basically to multiply the number of possible outcomes, right? So basically, you, you multiply the different choices that you have uh, to get your answer. So uh, later on in your homework, you're going to have some assignments where you're going to not do the tree. You won't need. You could do the tree, but as the choices become more, the tree becomes kind of cumbersome. And you don't really want to have to do that. Okay. So for example, when I look at number 15 in your homework, homework. Okay. When I look at number 15 in your homework. It asks the uh, same thing. This has a uh, different types of beverages. You have small, medium, and large. Small, medium, large, right? And you have orange juice. We'll call that OJ. Uh, we have apple juice. We have lemonade. And we have milk, so that's four different options right there, okay? So, um, when we look at this one right here, um, uh, we could do a tree. We could do small, medium, and large, and then see you could have a small, 
OJ, you could have a small apple juice, you could have a small lemonade, you could have a small milk, or you could have a medium OJ, a medium apple juice, a medium lemonade, or, lemonade, or a medium milk, or you could have a large OJ, a large apple juice, a large lemonade, or a large milk, and you could see what's in your sample space, right? You do the tree. That's going to take a little bit longer because of the number of options that you have. So one of the things we can do is we can take how many choices do we have in the first one? Three. How many choices do we have in the second one? That would be four and just multiply them together. Three times four is 12. And you think about the first example that I just did, we could have done that, right? Uh, we had uh, three different activities and two times, right? So three times two, six possible outcomes, right? The last thing that you're going to look at, look at um, and um, now that I, re I just realized this, I've been teaching this like you guys are gonna work out of the book and I just realized you don't have a book. So these are just examples. They are not ones from your homework. Sorry about that, guys. You'll get that from your practice worksheet, okay? But hopefully these examples will be useful to you. I can't believe I forgot you didn't have a book. All right, here's one more example. One of the things that you're going to do is called finding the probability of a compound event, okay? Finding the probability of a compound event. And so when you have to find the probability of a compound event, what you want to do... Um, is you want to uh, calculate the number of favorable outcomes and make, write that as a fraction out of the number of possible outcomes. So we're basically taking this information right here. So for example, um, you might say, what is the probability uh, that someone would get a small apple juice? Well, that would be a one in 12. There's only one uh, situation that, that uh, reflects that, right? So the desired outcome would be the small apple juice, that would be one, and the total number of outcomes are 12. So you have a probability of one in 12 if we were to randomly choose one of these offerings, right? Okay, um, so that's what we uh, look at there when we talk about uh, that, okay? Um, so um, hopefully that will help a little bit as you guys get into today's assignment. Thank you.